yeah. but I want to move on because there's a question that Tim uh, version 1.0 the beta of Tim's um, asks and I'm going to call this question of the week which I've not done for a while just question for the mighty red men TV good on you lad uh, do you think we'd be better off with Phil as part of the central midfield three where he played in 13-14 as opposed to the attack where he plays now he was excellent with three advanced attackers ahead of him now it seems as though he's lost all his through balls and flicks over the top and it's dribble and shoot rinse and repeat I love the kid but he's one of the most predictable players in the league and I think and I the big question for me is I actually think where's he better suited of the three positions. I think you've got that left of the three behind the striker. I think you've got the number ten, and then again, I don't think he's suited to one of the the, the two he holding mid the roles. Hold, yeah. But if you then switch to a diamond, do you put him back on the left hand side That's of the, the yeah. of the diamond? Does it where? And I. I honestly don't know because I think we've seen it. I think exactly what he says about the predictability. When he plays on the left-hand side, he needs somebody to actively link up with him because otherwise it becomes speculative. So yeah. he does that thing when he drops the shoulder, cuts inside, which he does at will, which is great, and then he has a pop shot. Now, when we've seen him linking up, as you mentioned earlier, with Sturridge, when someone plays a little give-and-go with him, he started to look a much more dangerous player towards the back end of the season. But, as we've said again already, oh, he can look badly isolated on that left-hand yeah. side. Yeah, it's very yeah. easy to know what he's going to do because he never, <coughs> ever goes down the down he doesn't way. go down the flat. And again, uh, uh, that kind of dovetails with Moreno does provide him that whiff. He just doesn't get back. Hector's not an attacking left-back. Now, it's not guaranteed that we're buying Hector, but he, he's the, the, the left-back that I'd rather have solidity in our left-back, which because we haven't got that with Moreno. So, is he going to become even more isolated if he's played out there in that formation? I think people need to... My honest answer is people need to start forgetting about the 13-14 season. I know Chris has mentioned it. We bring it up every week because you can't help it. it when we, that was the best we've been in recent Because it was so good. But also, we didn't play that 4-4-2 diamond that often. You know, look back at that whole season as a whole. We played it in a run and it was the when we played the best. But actually, most of those players aren't there anymore. I don't think... We, we've not seen Klopp play it ever. I don't think that's what we're going to play. It may suit him best, so maybe that's a reason why he'd be moved out or not. No, we, well, we have seen it. We've seen it. We saw it a fair bit to, uh, as a as a, a more attacking option toward the end of the season. And stuff. Really? I don't know. It was a it was a variation on it though, wasn't it? And, and Coutinho wasn't as ever. Oh, used Coutinho as part wasn't of, then used in that. He wasn't in that, used. He in was that used way. in the. He was either used in the, the ten, 10 or um, not on the pitch. Exactly. Yeah. But um, I think I think it, it, a statement. If, if it's true, and who knows, it could just be paper talk, clickbait and stuff. If there are bigger teams, PSG, Barcelona, sniffing around Phil, and Klopp says, no, I want to build my team around him. That's a huge statement. He then has to follow through with that and build the team around him. Yeah. So find wherever his best position is, buy the players to support that. It looks like, I, I know, obviously, Gerta, we were interested in Gerta, and Gerta would take the 10. Um, but it also looks like now you look at the attacking players that we're getting linked with, the very wide, the yeah. very the very pacey width players. So that would naturally see him move. Well, here's more the thing, isn't the it? Because I mean, if you haven't seen the transfer committee show, do go and check it out. But we talk about the, these guys to play through the ten. For me, you know, I think his first choice to play in that in that position behind the behind the, the main centre forward. Coutinho, we've seen him play from the left predominantly under Klopp, but I wonder how much of that is just because of what we've got available yeah, to us. No if you get a, a guy who can play left wing, does Coutinho dovetail do more into that that, attack, that central attacking slot? My issue with him, and this is where I think the question will be born from, uh, Tim's question will be born from, is that he's too. I think he's a bit too predictable from the left-hand side. I said we've seen the limitations of, of him there. When he plays the 10... His natural inclination isn't to get beyond the centre yeah. forward, and you which need I think you absolutely need to that. be able to do. Um, and when he, we don't play, and as you said, we don't play the diamond often enough. But I think uh, Rogers was happy for him to do it because when Phil Coutinho is absolutely on his game and he's fired up for a football match, he presses really well. He's stronger than he looks. He gets stuck in, but I don't think that's that comes naturally to him because yeah. I've seen him have games where you think go and do that against the team you're playing next week and the week after that and he, and he doesn't he seems to be able to raise his game but not have it consistently so two things do we play the diamond often enough and even if we played the diamonds our primary formation would Klopp actively choose to put him in there I don't think he's physical no. enough to no, be no. in one of those in one of those roles for him I think in an ideal world if we had if we got I think we could see a, you'd see an Emre Chan 
Henderson, Grujic or Milner or whatever situation, far more likely than you would see a Coutinho because of just, the, again, what physically those guys bring to the team. So it's a big question. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest to, to, to you. I don't, I don't know where where we'd be better off with them. My my feeling right here and now is, and a lot of this will depend on who we buy between now and the start of the season or the end of the transfer window, is Coutinho could become that, could become like a Louis Garcia, like a Benayoun, and that, that people might go, oh, Benayoun, he's, he's much better, he is much better than Jesse Benayoun. But if we engineer a situation where we've got another one or two brilliant attacking players, then Phil Coutinho doesn't have to play 50 games for Liverpool <coughs> yeah, next season. Yeah, doesn't have to be involved in every game. You can you can use him sparingly, you can bring him in and get the get the absolute best out yeah. of him. And that, that for me, would be absolutely, would be absolutely spot on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And again, it's a little element of like horses for courses, isn't it? You've said it a few times and I completely agree. Don't mess with your defence. Get a settled defence. So if we can get the back six, so the four and the keeper, plus the holding mid, which is probably going to be Chan, or if we buy someone else, and then you rotate those three and the striker. If one week we could play Firmino in a false nine and Coutinho's in the 10, the next week he might be coming in off the left because their right back's not particularly yeah. good or not particularly skillful. One week we decide to go with a Rigi and Sturridge as a two and whoever. And that's not even naming players that we might buy. And we are linked with a lot of attacking talent on, on the, in those positions as well. It'd be good to be in a position where we don't have to throw so much pressure on him. Yep. I do think the other element to him is because he is young, because he doesn't want to, he doesn't seem to want to be that main man. He has wilted under the yeah. ridiculous amounts of pressure of being the main man at Liverpool Football Club can bring, yeah. and it's good that um, if if we are going to bring in players who will want to take that on yep. on board, to just take the spotlight off him a little bit and let him do what he does best. Brilliant, thanks very much for the question. That is the end of this free segment. We're going to watch the full show, the Liverpool Transfer Rumour Roundup Show, or something like that. It's an hour long, it's on the redmentv.com. We're discussing, because it's there, Jonas Hector. Is he, isn't he? Maybe he isn't, although it looked like he was. Uh, we've got Liverpool squad valuation. Your comments on how much you'd accept for a bid on Phil Coutinho. We've got Andre Wisdom moving to Celtic. We've got Joe Gomez not. We've got Jamie Vardy, and should Liverpool have made a move? We've got Kane and Gibbs. We've got more on Zielinski. We've got more, a little bit on Leroy Sané. We've got someone on George, Kevin and Kudu. What more could you want? All Liverpool's transfer news rounded up in one place. It's completely free for a month. Go to the redmentv.com now.